Okay, so uh, first of all, thanks for joining everyone. It's going to be about uh, token engineering applied. Um, so I would ask for a show of hands who is already into token engineering, but uh, I guess uh, it won't change the course, course of the um, talk much. Um, so token engineering or engineering in principle is both uh, a design phase of what are we looking at, how are we going to, what is the problem, how are we going to solve it, and then apply a method and automated tooling to it. Um, and with token engineering, it goes really down for uh, starting from a design of an ecosystem, what is the token economy for the stakeholders, to modeling that ecosystem. And there we really have a great new tooling that I'll dig deeper into. And how do we get from that model to the actual smart contract code that we want to deploy on a blockchain and hopefully not update too much. So it's a real um, rocket science process. <laughs> Uh, and we have great people in this uh, community who help us get there. For me, uh, it was really uh, those those four people who got me into it. Sherman, back in 2017, when I heard her DAO stories, I was just, uh, uh, yeah, uh, blown away. And Trent, who started uh, the token engineering or towards this um, engineering principle and practice, uh, Michael Zargam, uh, whose whose work and tooling basically really helped helped me get into that, or get totally hooked. <laughs> it's CatCat, and of course uh, Angela, our token engineering global uh, community maker, uh, the life of it, uh, who keeps us engaged and committed. And basically, big thank you for to all of you guys. Without you, I wouldn't have a grasp uh, on this. And um, now, of course, I want to share it with everyone else <laughs> because we have a very short and very lively history of tokens. It started with, you know, pre-sales and ICOs, and it's, it's still getting a lot of people into trouble, not to mention all of the backholders uh, from then. Um, and in 2018, the people who really had their heart into this uh, stopped and asked themselves, okay, the token distribution matters. We want to incentivize our network with it. So we heard and saw uh, airdrops, uh, work tokens, like you get token contribution uh, uh, tokens for your contribution to the network that is valuable. That was around 2018. And around that time, we also wrapped our heads around, okay, guys, these are actually value networks. Uh, and we are just uh, thinking about how to reconfigure and reshare or redistribute that value in a digital manner. And that's when we got into this, okay, it's basically revenue share securitization uh, on a digital uh, ledger. And that's got a name, it's securitization. <laughs> it's a typical financial instrument that makes a lot of things more liquid. And if we can put it uh, on a tokenized manner on a global ledger, it's going to be a hell of a liquid market. That was the beginning, but starting with that and starting with the decentralized exchanges who used some of the techniques, we also got this understanding, okay, DAO wasn't the thing back in 2016 that just blew off and went away. It is this, this fundamental pattern that we are seeing and can uh, create or, or make useful. And that basically uh, is really about economy. So we're building digital economies. We might even just drop the token at some point. These digital economies have incentive layers and financial features built into them. And um, I learned a lot about an engineer's view on those digital economies. Economies are networked systems, digital or not, but digitally they become globally networked. They are complex and dynamic means they, I, they are in constant influx and change. So you have to look at them in nodes and edges, stakeholders and their relationships, okay? Or in stocks and flows. And if you have never heard of stock and flows, like, uh, or, you know, heard uh, of it in a book back in the days, uh, then literally it's a wake up call and go grab those books or join the token engineering uh, community. And we help each other to get into this new 
or into this way of thinking that we need. So these networks are not just complex, uh, but also they change over time. Um, they change the moment you do something. Uh, even your incentive mechanisms, your tokens will keep the change, uh, system in constant change. And in ways uh, that you cannot foresee because these systems are not linear. So that uh, is actually, uh, yeah, hell breaking laws, uh, but um, that being digital also has an advantage, namely, um, we can have real time data about this complex dynamic network systems. We can uh, model and then um, build our assumptions, but now with the data, we can also validate those assumptions really coming from the system and not from some theories only. And we can improve. And in that improve uh, part lies the whole beauty of tokenization and designing incentive mechanisms. But also, this is where it can really blow off. <laughs> so that's why we need to step back and uh, gather our tools and uh, put on this token engineering uh, hat and um, yeah, keep uh, exchanging the knowledge and building it. Um, digital economy is everything you didn't learn in econ, <laughs> but there are also in the economics coming uh, new uh, schools of thought, uh, they say, okay. But it's really about uh, people grasping that it's it's not you cannot just do with a simple model. It's about time, systems changing over time, ergodicity, it's complex economics, it's business dynamics. And these are some links uh, you can look uh, later on. It will give you a feel that it, things become much more exciting, but also um, we have a much bigger responsibility. So what you can expect from this talk and moving on uh, as well, it's about applied token engineering. So there are people who got, uh, who go into the foundations, the, the you know, this multidisciplinary scientific um, ground floor foundation for us. Token engineers, engineers from all um, uh, colors uh, come in and look at this token networks. Um, and build the tooling. And uh, my perspective is from as a computer scientist who dealt with decentralized energy systems for the last 10 years is how I can apply uh, what is now available. So I will be talking about tools and processes. And I said, this is what I learned from others as well. And uh, examples I will give, especially at the end, towards the end from Electro Seed Fund. This is what we're building in my network. Um, I Ixo Foundation's Alpha Bones, which are super interesting and related to us. Uh, we will have, or we are having exchanges and um, collaboration there soon. Molecule is a network that is already online. So it's basically funding uh, new crowdfunding for crowdsourced research, drug research really. And Fairmint, um, basically a new type of uh, VC where um, you get to, um, or it's a new funding for uh, startups with growth potential. And all of these examples have one, um, one common denominator. We all look into um, value creating networks or products or networks mostly that are decentralized and that need funding, that need continuous funding and how we're basically going to give it uh, or tokenize uh, these future revenue shares, but also how uh, these tokens then should be distributed so all of the stakeholder incentives are aligned. And I haven't mentioned this here, but a common stack uh, later on, uh, I go deep deeper into it, uh, Common Stack is an effort also to actually build more tooling for easier access uh, towards the same principle that we are now discovering or, or describing and making it uh, more accessible to others. Now, I hope uh, you had now enough time to uh, get the link. There's a Gitcoin grant for the token engineering community where um, these grants are matched and really help us to keep sharing this knowledge and create these resources. 
So uh, what got me excited the past <laughs> couple of weeks in lockdown uh, is really I come from computer science and we have this book, The Design Patterns Made by the Gang of Four. And uh, this business model generation book that most of you uh, for sure know, basically, uh, we are living in a space where those where I see those two uh, books converging uh, in something that we could call token design patterns and uh, token model generation and really explain it in the same manner. And since, as I mentioned, all of these projects have one pattern. These are crowdsourced and crowdfunded projects. So here's a link to an annotated uh, table of content uh, in the making. And the book is going to be tokenized. And at the very least, it will give us uh, a very basic uh, dog fooding experience. So I hope you'll join there as well. And uh, that's something I will be uh, uh, discussing more and more in the coming weeks and days. And from there, the token engineering community, especially Angela, is working towards uh, the, the tech uh, bootcamp. She will be talking about um, these are uh, all the events that we want to create, build together and create a knowledge exchange uh, and knowledge uh, creation and sharing uh, platforms, which now need to be more and more online. <laughs> we all have the feeling. So it's great to have this non-con experience go so well. <laughs> um, good. So let's uh, get into it. What is token engineering and what is it when it's applied? Uh, it's basically, uh, this talk will be about these two parts, but there is more to it. And I want to explain the whole uh, process once at least. So in the design part, really, um, we look into stakeholders, value creation, value sharing. How do we create buy-in from every stakeholder? These are typical things you ask uh, every time you you create a new business model, um, but um, as as we said, since all of this um, value creation and value sharing will be tokenized later on, and the buy-in will be really programmed into those tokens, this design phase is not just ideation; it's really part of an engineering design phase, and we have tools for that. So, for example, this ecosystem design toolkit I will show, and also something which uh, which was new for me, but it also has a tradition in trying to figure out what the stakeholders think and how they react in such complex networks is games. Games are really modeling and co-design and simulation with people. <laughs> and for me, as a non-gamer before, it was a real revelation. But there are really other undercurrents um, that feed into that. Um, and uh, there's a big, um, big, big um, area there. And what I found uh, is Le Grand Jeu. Again, these are the tools I will go uh, deeper into. Um, then uh, on the engineering side, uh, we have what software engineers, what, what engineers, electrical engineers, etc., know uh, by heart. These are models and simulations in engineering uh, part. This is creating an architecture, having uh, yeah development process uh, automations, automated tests, and security aud audits. What software engineers know by heart. And this part, uh, basically, from design to engineering, would really work smoothly if we also had a modeling language in between for token networks. We don't have it. We are using other stuff at the moment. But again, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. <clears throat> now, the tools on the engineering side, um, as I mentioned, one can model and simulate in Excel. This is what most of the token uh, engineers currently still do. Um, um, power system engineers use MATLAB, for example. And we have a lot of token engineers coming from these engineering uh, backgrounds who are familiar with MATLAB and Excel and now are getting into CAD-CAD. I will go into that uh, later on more. And then, of course, from that model and simulation of how this token network is designed, how it reacts, the agents end at the system level, then we need to pour it into code. 
there I don't go into at all, but at the end I want to uh, give a couple of thoughts to think about. Um, and the systems are multidisciplinary. Uh, the, the teams, uh, crypto economics is multidisciplinary, so the teams need to be multidisciplinary. The tools we are using come from different, uh, pros, uh, different areas, and the process is and has always been an iterative one between engineering design and engineering the deployment itself. And I don't know, uh, you probably know by now, this, uh, what I call the crypto economics flower from the paper Crypto Economics uh, Foundation. And it really shows nicely. On one hand, we have this computer science control theory, systems engineering, OR, where the tooling is also pretty um, well laid out. And on the other side, we have um, economics game theory playing into it, decision science. And uh, for me, it's really new political science governance, philosophy, law, ethics. It really... <laughs> Uh, blows my mind, but uh, we need in our teams when we really go for it, we need people who are willing to go over their own uh, comfort zones and look into uh, the domains of others and try to get this common understanding. And this is what I really value in the token engineering community, that it's full of people like this who, you know, who sleep much less. <laughs> Uh, uh, but uh, really are get, go out of their way and then take their time, even if their projects are running haywire, to create this common understanding. It's also super exciting. So let's go into part one, the design of a token economy. These are three big questions uh, that come up. And the one is, what is the purpose uh, of the ecosystem? Um, who are the agents? the stakeholders in your ecosystem, what are the boundaries and who are outside and how do you keep uh, the, the power balance? What do you want the system to do or what do the stakeholders want that system to do? What do they join for? What is the optimization function? When you have that, then uh, you at the very least once or twice or all the time ask yourself, is this even desirable? Because a lot of things can go wrong and if they can, they will. So it's really good that we know we have better tooling now because two years ago, I really didn't dare to go forward with one of the greatest projects that uh, came my way. But now with Electro Seed Fund and with the tooling we have, um, it definitely is achievable. Uh, a lot of things still can go wrong, but at least we will know them hopefully before we deploy these systems. So, um, second part, what are the resources of these agents, of these stakeholders? Uh, what do they bring in and what is their motivation to bring in at all and to share it or to you know, offer it in the network? Uh, and some of the network players will be subsidized, but still there must be peer potential. There should be no uh, center of gravity, no uh, natural flows to, to uh, a single superpower, also uh, no incentives for free riders. So what we want to create in the in, in this second uh, second part of the big question or the second big question is, do we have a sum game that is positive? Uh, because zero sum games tend to move towards that single power towards these these platform economies. And uh, when we have a positive sum game, uh, where does this value surplus, this reward that we want to share for incentives come from? These are the questions that are very businessy. And the, the third part is even very political. <laughs> so uh, who is this ecosystem? How is this ecosystem going to be governed? And there we, all of us are very, um, very fond with the Ostromian governance where some principles say it has to be standardizable. It has to have a, a very easy sanction system and the easiest is uh, basically rewards. Uh, it has to have legit uh, legitimacy within the system and also outside. And the people in the network uh, will have to buy in, meaning they will uh, need to understand 
no matter how complex the network, uh, they will need to really want it. And they most probably to do all of that uh, should be able to co-create it, uh, create it from the beginning. So um, for these three big questions, um, um, we ask them a lot of the times and a lot of the times we also wanted to just cut corners and make an MVP, but that doesn't work like that. If you don't want to end up in the old world, uh, we really need to create a new one. And the Electricity Fund is uh, basically the thing that keeps me uh, up at night is an ecosystem uh, that shall accelerate the access to clean energy in the developing world, as well as in our uh, developed regions where people want to have uh, clean energy. And there we have to ask who creates the value. These are the smart microgrid operators, the people who bring those uh, solar and storage uh, to people on rooftops, to villages in sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, also the value is the social and environmental and especially in developing countries, the economic impact that clean energy access has. So these are the value creators, the operators and the customers and uh, the ecosystem's purpose. Um, don't need to go into details, but it needs to de-risk these capital costs, uh, incentivize the high impact. And from that, uh, the, the question you have to ask is, okay, who are the other stakeholders who can help, uh, who can add value and what are their motivations? And this can become really, really complex or, or you don't know where to start. And having a toolkit like those canvases we know from business model generation is very helpful. And I found one uh, from Wille Olerantes called uh, Ecosystem Design Toolkit. It's built on Simon Cicero's platform design toolkit, but it uh, incorporates this Eleanor Ostrom's uh, governance thought. And the result of it can be the input specification of modeling into a um, computer added design tool like CAD-CAD. Here, I really can only give a quick overview, just that you have a feel what is the canvases and how we used it in Electricity Fund as an example. Is uh, basically, this is the rainbow canvas where you deeply and multiple times think about how to arrange, how to involve your stakeholders and who are the ones who create value, who are the ones who add value by helping those in the core helping the value creators, uh, who are the ones, uh, intrinsic investors, because they are deeply coupled to the people at the core of it. For example, the diaspora of the people in rural uh, Africa, who now can have their own electricity supply, uh, own infrastructure. It's a very strong tie. They have intrinsic motivation to support uh, or to be part of this fund. So, and then you can think about sponsors. In our case, it's the SDG7 Clean Energy Access, and it's quite uh, easy to identify sponsors um, who also have a more intrinsic motivation than, for example, just some investor. And on the <laughs> outside outskirts, we have the regulators who are also part of it. So this is the biggest part. If you, if you have done it once and you feel like this is it, uh, then you can go into ecosystem member profiles. I don't explain all of it, but for each of those uh, um, companies that you named, the, we have four microgrid operators. We ask what are their characteristics? What are their valuable assets and valuable capabilities? And thinking about that, you will see at first, you don't know all of them. You don't know all of them equally well. So it gives you motivation to go out and uh, yeah, have another co deeper conversation. And when you come back, you have these profiles, then you can ask uh, yourself first, but also then start to communicate within the ecosystem. Uh, what is this motivation of you guys? Why should you really come and join into this network? And you do that by setting up this matrix by asking who gives uh, what to whom. And from that matrix, uh, or after that matrix, really, you have to ask um, 
how is this ecosystem is going to uh, governed? And these are typical questions. For example, um, who can participate in modifying the rules? You know, uh, who decides and who decides who decides? These are really the tough questions, and you have to uh, pose and ask each one of them. And you shouldn't do it alone. <laughs> you should really involve the stakeholders. And uh, this is one tool, Le Grand Jeu. It's a game, it's a board tabletop game, and it's got already a really uh, big fan. And we tried it multiple times, and you can adapt it to your uh, network as well. Here, uh, we go into basically also uh, having um, a AV version of it. So there's also a Gitcoin grant for that. Um, and basically, it really gives uh, you the potential uh, to better interact, to involve the community uh, from day one. Uh, it needs to be in person in the beginning, but uh, hopefully we will also have digital versions of it. Um, a lot of people pick this up and they're working with it. And for Electricity Fund, it was really tough because we're bringing many topics together and uh, it really helps for people to actually get uh, crazy stuff <laughs> like tokenized funds, but also the, the uh, financial engineering stuff like diversification. Why do we pull these uh, smart microgrids together? What is value? You know, these beads, uh, the black ones are revenues and the white ones uh, white ones are the social impact and this triangle is an augmented bonding curve. And it feels really different if you can experience this type of uh, new, uh, new um, funding mechanism, right? Uh, of which only the geeks talk in their geek tongue. Uh, it, it, it involves people in a different way, but also it's a very different, um, way of doing things. So we have this adaptation, it's called Electricity Fun. We will work, keep working on it. And it really uh, has also uh, explained the augmented bonding curves that are being uh, developed as tooling for the community in an open source manner in common stack. Definitely check both out. Now coming to part two, I realize <laughs> I actually only have two minutes and this is the 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 real deal <laughs> the real don't, part don't, don't worry about it so um next yeah. we're scheduled for 4 30. Okay. we should have uh, have a break but um if you yeah. need a longer time that's okay we will just not have a I break i will not do too long but definitely yeah. 10 more minutes for, <laughs> for part right. two yeah. yeah so uh basically now the the as you rem remember or recall i know i'm going through this very fast but we have this this canvas is, is are very familiar we have this game is really you should check it out and try it out um and that gives you really good documentation and experience of the stakeholder dynamics and maybe stories uh, emerge that you couldn't think of especially what could go wrong and how are these stakeholders or, or participants going to game the system or do they even find better ways of solving a problem now from there the engineering part begins and this is where i feel more comfortable <clears throat> but also um i'm more um um, how do you call it? Uh, yeah, more perfectionist. <laughs> so, um, but I said, I wouldn't uh, do this or I wouldn't stay here and say we have it if we didn't have, and we really have all the tools we need and uh, can really now say we do engineering. And for that, uh, moving from design, uh, from business design, even to engineering design, and from there to real engineering and deployment, we need at least two people uh, on each side. One is really the domain expert and the token engineer, where we really have this requirements engineering and modeling and simulation part that must at some point go into scientific computing uh, or be done with uh, these tools and on the other side then we have the token engineer talking with the smart contract developer and uh, getting from this modeling and simulation to say okay 
uh, what primitives did we use? Are there any boilerplates that we can reuse uh, code? Um, or is this a completely new design? Uh, do we need a new architecture? And then once the architecture is there, the development is done, how is it going to be uh, deployed, maintained? And also before it's deployed and maintained, uh, security audits need to be done. But on the right hand side, we really have already, even in the token engineering space or token system space, a good tooling and good processes. But what's really new and really in, um, uh, makes the life of the smart contracts developer easy is having these models and simulations uh, actually helping them to parameterize the code, etc. And this is a luxury that uh, the smart contracts developer teams uh, should look forward to or should really also get themselves into it. And in the middle, because it's modeling and simulation, it's a lot of maths. <laughs> So, um, and they're um, uh, really definitely finance math, okay? Securitization, it's part of every token network, uh, part of it. Then um, the domain math in our pace, uh, case, energy, uh, how does, does the network resource really flow? Uh, what is it um, affected by, etc. And also in our case, uh, but in general, these two domains uh, will meet uh, in what's called control theory. It's about complex systems and how to design uh, safeguards uh, right and left. So you have a path and you know you cannot go off rails. Um, a lot of math. <laughs> but also what I want to put in there is uh, uh, we need to get out of our techie world and really look into the ethics and the psychology and the philosophy and the anthropology of what we are touching there because it's crypto economics uh, is deployed in people's lives and uh, token engineering can quickly become social engineering and you don't want to be responsible for such a thing. So um, work in multidisciplinary system, uh, teams and seek out people who are going to uh, help you get a, this ethical point of view in what you're doing. Super important. Um, and in, in that second area, um, the, the, let's say it, the, the luxury we now have is the state driven modeling and simulation tool. Uh, it's designed or it's developed by Block Science, uh, Zargam and team basically used it in a lot of their works uh, and uh, created it from, from their own process. It's an open source framework now uh, in Python and uh, that you can also couple with your data pipeline. And that's especially important if you have a digital mostly network like Filecoin or also in our um, traditional uh, cyber physical systems like smart microgrids where we have an energy network uh, decentralized energy network, but also that network speaks uh, and talks a lot of data. We can get that data coupled right into uh, from the data pipeline that is in Python into CAD-CAD and uh, really replace our assumptions by real-world deployment data and feedback from the system. And this is uh, really great. Um, I cannot <laughs> underscore it enough. Um, and um, a second part uh, that is also new is that the tooling allows not just the system model uh, or not just a, an agent-based model. Typically, engineers are used to use those models, but different uh, in different tools even, or different tools for it. But in CatCat, you can, and you have the opportunity to use both, and it is very good for token networks. Uh, because we are putting in smart contracts, um, invariants in those uh, system designs that are going to affect agents, but also agents uh, or system stakeholders will uh, act uh, in unforeseen ways. And we need to figure out uh, how these two system and agent uh, level interact. And what are these this, this unforeseeable uh, um, emergence um, that we can at least have a feel for in the model?
The engineering process, as mentioned, um, is an iterative one. It's uh, about identifying the optimization goal. What is the outcome that we want? And uh, it's about uh, really defining or adapting uh, existing primitives, combining them or generating and capturing uh, new patterns. And this is, for example, something since block science team and the people around CatCat, it's an open source community already are into and have already experienced a couple of models. Uh, we already see that there is a great reuse potential and there is now a Gitcoin grant live, especially also going into that, uh, into um, really making this open source community more resourceful. So definitely go check it out. It's a great entry point to the CatCat community as well. The Gitcoin grant site uh, shows everything you need, where to go next. And um, basically it also, um, or you once you join the community, you really get into the state, okay, what is the model? Uh, uh, it is described by state variables, uh, update functions, policy functions, which is really the, the logic of the agent or the system or the external uh, effects that the system have. You define everything in a function as functions and basically this cat cat, this differential games engine runs the simulation of that model for you. You can do parameter sweeps. Uh, or Monte Carlo runs, uh, meaning you can see how the system reacts in, in unforeseeable ways uh, by unforeseen events uh, through these two methods. Again, um, now I will go through the examples and each one of us is uh, differently far ahead or not, uh, Electro Seed Fund uh, and me now, really we are at the beginning and uh, we are successful get into uh, the mood of thinking in systems. <laughs> and this is basically the first round where I say, okay, this is uh, how I would uh, uh, model electro seed fund. Uh, and this is um, basically multiple systems interacting as you see the energy system, then the financial or the, the token uh, tokenization system, which includes in itself a curation system and these need to be defined through state variables which is um, you know in this funding scheme um, or in this tokenization scheme sorry um, it's about the liquidity reserve the funding pool these are the stocks uh, the revenues that come back in from the funded projects and the impact that those projects uh, created which are valued so the, the great thing we, we are able now is really value intangible things as long as we can uh, quantify the data. Policies, parameters, I don't want to go into it because we don't have time, but you have here an example and I will also add some more links that you can go and go through the GitHubs um, basically. But once you have defined the, the the token network in the in these uh, variables policies parameters you can start um, quantifying uh, and then stating your assumptions you can start quantifying the model and then you can ask real big questions and just run the simulations and this is really great i've seen it in other projects um, for example molecule is entirely open source um, and Ben Schultz did uh, uh, most of the modeling uh, for them uh, or in that team. It's from Linum Labs. Uh, and basically this is my go-to resource <laughs> when I want to uh, learn or got stuck. Um, again, this is how they used it and they're really already online since January. They have their crowdfunding for the research projects going. This is their model architecture, which they put into CatCat code the cat cat simulations they run <clears throat> uh, multiple experiments etc and from that then uh, this model can go one to one almost to parameterized code and as i mentioned the luxury is that now you don't have to think about okay is it going to be uh, 10 percent or, or um or what is going to be the tax or the token value initiation initialization all of this you get through the system model 
And another example is uh, Ixo Foundation. Sean also had a uh, talk yesterday, uh, and they also run all of these uh, simulations. And once you run the simulations, you have data about your system, about how it reacted. And now you can ask very specific deep dive questions. For example, the Ixo Foundation asks, okay, at the Alpha Bond, this innovation that we came up with, um, how is its liquidity uh, potential? And they run multiple simulations and they put all of this out there. And uh, you can imagine it's an entirely different universe of transparency and creating trust. Uh, being that uh, rigorous with your network and that open, uh, we didn't have that in the past years. And this is a new game. And this new game, <laughs> needs a lot of uh, yeah a lot of uh, heart and that I see comes from this common stack community it's a really great community um, of course there is also block science and give us so the, the people uh, who build the other tools already behind it um, Jeff Emelt, uh, Griff you heard I'm sure uh, uh, a lot of their um, explanations of common stack already uh, it's basically really, as I mentioned, we have these patterns, this code that we develop, it can be reused, but then it can be really uh, brought into building blocks as well. So that, um, you know, it's almost like, can you imagine in five years, there will be a version of no code for this token networks. It starts with common stack where you can really have governance tools, funding tools, analysis, analytics tools for complex token networks that have been tested and tried by many, many, many others that have been improved by the entire economy. This is uh, basically the common stack creating common tools for the token economy architects of, of tomorrow. And they already started uh, with open sourcing one, which is the augment bonding curve. As I mentioned, all of the other examples have this notion of a bonding curve and it is augmented for funding and again all of us use the same uh, pattern that we securitize the future revenues of the projects and also that we make visible the impact uh, that they create or in some form a uh, for sort of other incentivization other network creating this positive sum game people care about more than just revenues and that you can also program into your uh, token network or token design. And that is, uh, in my view, is the, what the augmentation part is. And they've built this uh, great simulation that's out there. Again, this is the Gitcoin grant you want to um, support. Uh, it really is about building better interfaces to all of the geeky stuff. <laughs> that we build and refine and then refactor. Uh, I think I'm almost, I'm at the end. So that was the end. <laughs> I just want to maybe put out there a couple of thoughts uh, um, or an outlook where, you know, when, the look, when I have to look uh, at the horizon, this is it. How do we move from this model to production code? And there, I had mentioned in the beginning, if we had a common modeling language between a tooling like CADCAD and between a, a, um, an IDE like Truffle or alone, let it be just uh, the, the programming uh, language be the same, that would uh, create, um, again, um, a lot of ease for the development deployment a lot of reduction of errors that will come from a model that needs to port it into a code, but by many different people without an automation. Uh, so a common modeling language, which is also in the grant of uh, CatCat, uh, check it out, um, would really help get uh, a lot of more efficiency and a lot of less error uh, in the process. We could really directly map uh, from the model to code that then can be formally verified before we deploy it. And the second big thing <laughs> we really need to care, uh, take care of now, uh, we, we are getting real. 
and uh, we cannot just gather all the data uh, uh, or we cannot. So we need to create this privacy preserving architectures that are able to um, analyze data without exposing uh, or without um, putting it all into one place, but leaving it at the, at the data owner's place. In our case, these are the smart microgrid operators. It's, it's their systems data, and we want to have decentralized analysis of this data as well. This is an entirely different uh, ball game again. Uh, it's more as uh, yeah, software and machine learning and, and uh, privacy um, uh, question uh, rather than token engineering alone. But one thing you can keep in mind is we need to move away from data pipelines to data pods. Uh, and really just one last thought, <laughs> and I'd like to discuss this, is it's super hard to cut an MVP for complex token networks. How do you cut it? How do you make this first minimally viable product? Is this even a product if we're talking networks? Uh, you know, if we really create an entire sector like a finance sector and make that a feature uh, of this product, it's more a revolution. So is there something like an MVR, a minimally viable revolution? Uh, and, and also really we need to think about keeping things decentralized, the entire architecture from the beginning, uh, software wise, but also governance wise. Otherwise, we will be using the same methods uh, that create, you know, platform economies and create uh, uh, monopolies and add some hope to it <laughs> and hope that it's going to be a different outcome. I don't think so. So I believe there is still a lot to be done, but the tooling that we have now uh, really gives me a very good night's sleep. <laughs> so with this, uh, I am at the end. Good. Um, uh, we but, have only, thank you very much for the talk. Thank you for the presentation. Um, we have one question already, or a couple of questions in the chat already, but we don't have much time. So, yeah. uh, if it's okay with you, Shannon, I will read it out and we will, we can, of course, uh, continue the discussions in another room. But for this room, we have a next speaker scheduled. Okay. So, the question would be um, what would be the big picture? economic optimization using the, an example and if possible let's use an energy sector example so what would be the big picture economic optimization so especially in electro seeds fund the economic optimization is two ways one is um, traditional financial optimization by diversifying and by pooling we create a much more stable uh, fund um, and the second is by incentivizing the people running those uh, smart microgrids and using those smart microgrids to incentivize them to run, operate them optimally and to incentivize them to use it more efficiently. Uh, it's a new game that was never there before and making that part of this economic game, again, <laughs> I think this is the game changer. So you have a fund basically that doesn't need an asset manager, a fund manager, and you don't need to, um, you, you can really incentivize every stakeholder in there to keep that fund afloat, to, to reduce the risk uh, of bringing in projects to, you know, not bring too risky projects, but also you can incentivize that people, the curators, uh, bring in uh, projects that are more impactful. And then you have something like a cat cat model that helps you uh, see into the multiple complexities of it. Where could this thing go uh, blow off? So this is really new. Um, and I have, it, it doesn't exist. And uh, for us to be able to say we have tooling to make this real is a game changer. I, you haven't seen this in, in Siemens and Siemens is a global player, for example, right? So it's uh, a huge, huge uh, potential. And also if you've seen uh, Sean's examples yesterday from impact and impact funding, again, the ability to decentralize and coordinate entirely differently the impact funding model 
is a game changer. <clears throat> and for us, uh, making this um, transparent, making it um, yeah trustworthy through these open uh, system models, again, is a game changer. <laughs> it's just, uh, we just play with game changers, basically. <laughs> But also join token engineering community and we can have these deeper uh, discussions. I'm really happy to have them with you. Thank you, Shevin, so much. Thank you.